The expected effects of climate change, such as heat, drought, storms or forest pests, will vary greatly between species and local site conditions. With the tree species selected today, the next generation of forest is being established, and this should survive the possible climate scenarios of the future. What can we do as forest managers? The central element is the tree species selection, and the species obviously is really dependent on its physiological traits, which are significantly defined by their genetics. We need to make sure that in the forest, if possible, we use tree species which will survive the inevitable drought scenarios or long dry periods. Secondly, it is important not to narrow the genetic diversity down too much, since just like with people, forests aren't made up of only identical trees. They have different genetic traits which then, according to how the conditions change, become apparent. Now, imagine the worst case scenario, we only have one clone. Then the system has few options. If we have a wider genetic spectrum, we are on the safe side. Very low and flat locations, which already dry up in summer, are especially at risk. Especially in flat and hilly landscapes, a change of the major tree species could become necessary. This substitution from one species by another can be actively accelerated and supported. Apart from the cultivation of native hardwoods, such as the common oak, sessile oak or other precious hardwoods, currently and also in the future, non-native species are being cultivated. For example, the North American Douglas fir. It grows well, is able to cope with drought periods and its wood quality allows a wide spectrum of utilizations, similar to our Norway spruce. Further, non-native, non-American tree species, which could play a larger role in climate change, are red oak and grand fir. These two species grow well in Europe, however, the quality of their wood is lower than that of their European relatives. If climate change continues, further species and provenances might be required in the future maybe from other seed origins and more southern distribution areas of our current species. Important candidates are the cedars from Lebanon, or the Calabrian fir. The latter is a seed provenance of our native silver fir, originating from southern Italy, which has shown its capabilities for growing under warm conditions in Austria already in the past. The selection of suitable climate-tolerant tree species reduces the risk of failure. The forest type, whether it is a coniferous forest, a mixed forest, or a deciduous forest, needs to be taken into account, as well as whether it is being afforested and taken care of. In case of an afforestation, the owner, along with the responsible forest authority, should consider the previous condition of the forest stand, and then decide which tree species can be planted here in the future. This decision largely depends on the soil conditions and altitude. Due to the mountainous terrain, Austria is delineated into several regions of provenance, which should be considered for the selection of forest plants. Advice on the selection of the appropriate provenances can be required from experts at the Chamber of Agricultural, Regional Forestry Authorities and Forest Nurseries. Moreover, the online information platform Herkunftsberatung.at helps identifying the optimal seed and seedling material for the respective site conditions. If available, the necessary plants for afforestation can be purchased from a nursery, where the seedling material originates either from a selected seed stand or a seed orchard. In forest areas where a change in the local site conditions is expected with climate change, a higher tree species diversity can be a suitable way to prepare for an uncertain future development. Mixed forests are more adapted to deal with disturbances and are less susceptible to climatic and biological issues. Important criteria for the choice of tree species are the adaptedness to local site conditions, economic efficiency and the adaptability to future conditions. Whether a forest stand will be artificially afforested or rejuvenated via natural regeneration should not be a matter of fixed principles. This decision should be made according to the given situation and both can also be used in combination with each other.
If the genetic characteristic of the original adult stand is fine, natural regeneration will provide a broad genetic spectrum, an unaffected root development, reduced risks of game browsing, and often also lower costs. Given that the young plants are taken care of and the initial thinning occurs in time, a positive qualitative development of the resulting stand can be expected. Artificial regeneration with forest plants has other advantages. For example, new tree species which were not available in the adult stand can be integrated and might help to increase tree species diversity and forest stability in climate change. Moreover, forest plants can make use of the latest generation of improved genetic material, thus facilitating higher productivity and better stem quality. Artificial regeneration requires forest plants and planting methods that guarantee a species-specific healthy root development. Two types of forest plants are available in Austria. These are containerized plants and bare root plants. Container seedlings, also known as potted plants, germinate and grow within the containers until they are planted in the forest. The root is one of the tree's most important organs. Like the foundation of a house, it gives the tree stability and anchors it to the soil. Moreover, the root is responsible for the tree's nutrient and water uptake. The roots of our containerized seedlings are well protected by the container. Thus, on its way from the nursery to the afforestation site in the forest, roots cannot be damaged or dry out. The planting of the young trees can be done either during spring or fall, when the root activity is at its peak. Traditionally, springtime before bud burst is the best time for afforestation. At high altitudes, also the time from mid to end of August can be recommended while at lower altitudes, planting work can be done until mid-October. If planted at the right period, trees are likely to establish well. Timely planning, storage and pretreatment of the seedlings are important. Containerized seedlings should be kept well watered and outdoors at a shady place. The afforestation site needs to be prepared as well. To plant containerized seedlings requires special tools, which are adapted to the respective container system. Here we are at a forest site that was hugely damaged by wind throw about two years ago. Now we are going to reforest it with containerized seedlings. Here we have the optimized planting tool for containerized seedlings. First, we are going to remove the raw humus layer, the needle covered layer. With a strong kick, we place the planting tool into the soil. One half turn to the left, one half turn to the right. Now the containerized seedling is put into the plant hole and lightly pressed. That's it. Now we can continue at a distance of 2.5 meters with the next plant. Apart from containerized seedlings with a ball of roots, forest managers can also choose bare root seedlings grown in nursery beds of traditional forest seedling producers. The bare root seedling. In my opinion, it has three advantages. Firstly, the seedlings can be planted at a larger size. A container predetermines the maximum size, since of course it only fits a certain amount. Such larger plants can be identified more easily on the afforestation site, and thus caretaking is more efficient. And lastly, the plant is half as cheap or even two-thirds cheaper. The bare root seedlings are transported and stored within a special seedling bag, which reflects the sun and heat, and keeps the seedlings inside cold, moist and dark. In order to get these roots into the soil without any deformation, we need to perform a root cutting. I have turned this plant upside down in order to see which roots hang down the most, and these are the ones which I will have to cut off. We'll do this right away with anvil shears. 
und weiters muss ich nur schauen, ob diese Wurzeln Also I need to make sure these roots aren't severely deformed or damaged. Deformation hat bzw. eine Verletzung. Und jetzt können And wir sie can plant them. Bare root seedlings need to be planted differently than containerized seedlings. Good seedling quality and plantation quality can be achieved with whole planting. To do this, I'll take the hupo hoe and pull away the raw humus and needle layer and loosen up the soil. Now I need to make a hole, which is wide enough to accommodate the entire root. Then I put the seedling into the hole and move the soil back into the hole. When it is full, the soil should be pressed gently. Strong pressure is not necessary. Then I can test whether the plant is placed properly. If it can't be pulled out easily, it is well planted. Another method for planting bare root plants is angle planting. I will remove the raw humus layer again. Loosen the soil. Swivel the plant in. Bring the roots in order. Use the hoe and then press. The second plant is placed. Such seedlings can be well planted in soil which is still full of snow moisture. The moment the snow is gone, the ground is hydrated and the seedlings should be planted since the soil is open and plants can grow well. If the weeds are very strong, the grass and bushes around the seedlings need to be trimmed after a year or even earlier. This can be done mechanically, but is usually done by hand. If a clear-cut area is planted, there should be approximately between 2,000 and 2,500 seedlings per hectare. However, this depends on the tree species and the local site conditions. An optimal planting of seedlings is essential for the later tree development. An experiment of the Austrian Research Center for Forests investigated the soil anchoring of Norway spruce, which had been planted using different planting methods. The trees were uprooted by a windlass and the necessary power was measured. It demonstrated that the planting method has an effect on the later development of the root and the stability of the tree.